Today we're talking about Nicholas. This is a quick, short bonus episode talking about a man named Nicholas. If you listened to my last podcast on the Council of Nicaea, we talked a little bit about Nicholas, and I want to talk a little bit more about who he is and how he became one of the most famous bishops, actually I would say the most famous bishop from this time period. So you go all the way back to the year AD 325. It's been about 300 years since Jesus died and rose again, and a group of Christian leaders are meeting. The meeting starts on May 20th and lasts until June the 19th. It's called the Council of Nicaea. Present at this meeting are a lot of religious leaders, but there's two in particular, Nicholas and Arius. Now, Nicholas believes that Jesus was and is God. He died, but rose again and is alive. Arius believes Jesus was a man. He was not God. He is dead now, and we can learn from his writings. Arius stands and addresses the group. He's speaking and explains to the group his view on who Jesus is. Nicholas stands in defiance, and the two men begin arguing. As Arius continues to say that Jesus was not God, Nicholas runs forward and punches him in the face and knocks him to the ground. Okay, other than a very strong believer in the fact that Jesus is and was God, Nicholas was a very wealthy man. His parents had left him a lot of money, and he gave his money away generously. One day, Nicholas heard about a man who had three daughters. The man had no money, and his daughters were about to be taken away as slaves. And the girls wanted to be married, but they had no money for the wedding. Nicholas wanted to help, but he was a humble man. He didn't want anyone to know the help came from him. So he dropped three pieces of gold through a window for the man, one for each daughter. Now the girls have been hanging stockings by the window so that they would dry, and the gold landed in the stockings of the girls that they had hung by the window. The money helped pay off the father's debt and pay for the girl's wedding. Now that story spread quickly. This was not the only time Nicholas dropped money or gold through windows or down chimneys to help people. After he died, the church set aside December the 6th to remember his generous giving and how hard he fought to keep purity of the scriptures. To celebrate his special day, they gave gifts to each other. His story was told to children as a way to teach them to be kind and generous. The story became very popular in Germany and also with the Dutch people. They had two different versions of this story and they pronounced the name kind of differently. Now, when America was founded, people began traveling to America and Canada from Germany and the Netherlands. The Germans and the Dutch brought this celebration of St. Nicholas Day with them on December the 6th. Now, the British were celebrating December 25th, Christmas Day, and the two celebrations sort of merged. The English liked the giving gifts thing with St. Nicholas Day, but when they tried to pronounce St. Nicholas Day, with the accent that the Germans and the Dutch used, it kind of came out more like Santa Claus. But it really only took off in the southern parts of the United States. In the north, no one was really celebrating Santa Claus Day. Then came the Civil War to free the slaves. Lincoln made posters of St. Nicholas hanging out with the Union Army troops as a way to make the rebel soldiers angry. He kind of stole their guy and made put their guy into his army. The posters became part of Northern propaganda, and by the end of the Civil War, St. Nicholas, or Santa Claus, was part of all of American celebration. But it wasn't until Coca-Cola decided they would use this guy as an image in their posters that we got the Santa Claus of today. Now, he always had a red robe because he was a bishop, and bishops wore red robes. But the large big belly and the rosy cheeks and the white cuffs around the edge of his coat, that's all from an artist from Coca-Cola. All right, so today, if you want to celebrate Santa Claus, try it this way. Be generous. Be kind. Punch a teacher of false doctrine in the face. Okay, just kidding. Don't go out and punch anyone. But you can stand up for the true teachings of the Bible, that Jesus is God. If Nicholas was alive today. He probably wouldn't like the remembrance of him 
giving him godlike qualities. So if you really want to celebrate the man Nicholas, be respectful of his beliefs. He believed Jesus is God and he believed Jesus was the only one who could get us to heaven. So don't give Nicholas those godlike characters because he wouldn't have liked that. For more podcasts and blogs and videos, check out my website, lauraleesiemens.com. And if you want to hear more about the Council of Nicaea, I just did a podcast on that right here on Church History called the Council of Nicaea. So check that out. I'll see you next time for more Church History.